We are. How are you doing there, folks? Uh, so, 2022, uh, chemical equilibrium recalculation, but a theory. So, the first thing here to ask us is explain chemical equilibrium in terms of rates of reaction. So, chemical, chemical equilibrium occurs when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. So, that's the key point there. The rate of the forward equals the rate of the reverse. The next thing in terms of concentrations, concentrations remain constant. You know, so if you're looking at a graph, you might see it in the study or textbook or your notes. You often see your reactants, they decrease in concentration. They don't go to zero because reactants are forming products and products are forming reactants. That's that thing known as dynamic equilibrium. Whereas your products are starting off zero and then they're increasing. It depends on your concentration. Once we get this flat line here, and if we labeled our y-axis as concentration there, there's no change. So in terms of concentrations, concentrations remain constant. There's no change in the terms of concentrations. It appears that the reaction has ceased, but it hasn't. You know, that's always a key thing. Has the reaction ceased? No, it hasn't. Reactants are forming products, and products are forming reactants at the same rate. Write an expression for Kc. Now Kc, you need your big dirty brackets, square brackets. It's the concentration of our products over reactants in moles per litre. So if we look at this, our products, what's produced is on the right hand side, CH3OH. So don't be lazy, make sure you have square brackets. I would do them better with a pen. CO, um, that's our carbon monoxide and our hydrogen. And don't forget your power of two up there. The power of two is coming from the coefficient of hydrogen, the number in front of hydrogen. So that comes up as a power. And there's no plus sign, they're being multiplied together. Calculate the value of Kc described above based on the researcher's report of a 25% conversion. So that's that change. Now, there's different ways you can do this. What I always do is I write down my equation. Now, it's not co cobalt, it's carbon monoxide. Plus my hydrogen. Given my CH3OH. And I can see there it's a reversible reaction given by this arrow here. So I always use the headings moles initially change moles at equilibrium and then equilibrium concentration and that's in moles per litre now another thing good to do at the start is fill in your ratio the ratio there is one two, one. So you might hear one people or some people chatting about rice. So that brings in your ratio, probably your initial, your change, and then your equilibrium. So it's the same thing. So if you think of the acronym rice, or just try and remember those things, and you should remember them because you should be doing them enough. Keep doing them till you get them right. So what have we got initially here? A researcher mixed five liters of carbon monoxide. So my moles initially is five liters there, or ten, five moles, sorry, and 10 moles of hydrogen. And a five liter flask. Now a five liter is going to come out at the very end. And I've got zero moles of methanol. My change there, it's not the minus x, we're working out our KC. It says a 25% conversion. So we'll get the calculators out, find 25%, and I get there 1.25. So that means there my reactants are going to go down. Minus 1.25. Now not each of them, because of that pesky little two. It's going to go down twice the amount. Oh, jeez. It's going to go down two and a half. I don't know why that's starked out. If anyone knows, new to this Chromebook, wouldn't be great on it. And my products, they're increasing in value. You can't have, the obviously, negative values. And since there's no number in front of it, there's a one in front of it, technically. It's going back to the 1.25. Tidy that up. 5 minus 1.25, 3.75, 7.5. 1.25 and then the last thing there was the 5 litre container using our square brackets moles per litre so 3.75 over 5 7.5 over 5 1.25 over 5 throw each of these figures in your calculator and we get 0 0.75 1.5 1.25 all we've got to do, these three figures then, are going to go back in up here. So KC, 
is equal to my CH3OH, which is 0 0.25, over my carbon monoxide, 0 0.75, and my hydrogen there, 1.5 squared. Throw that all into your calculator. Type it as you see it there. So, it's only the 1.5s getting the squared. You get 4 over 27. Always a good idea to write down your fraction and the decimal. It's just going to work out a bit of a brute. Keep pressing that SD button. And I'm getting there 0 0.148. So my value of KC. We don't need units. Um, there is units. Um, they don't all cancel out here. But in terms of the leaving cert, we don't need units there. Next thing. Uh, this one here. Part C. Starting with 5 moles of carbon monoxide and 10 moles of hydrogen in a 5 litre container, this temperature in the presence of two different catalysts, the same equilibrium is reached. What is the advantage? This is like my rates of reaction question. What's the advantage of using a catalyst? So, a catalyst, it increases the rate of both the forward and the reverse reaction by the same amount. It's your key thing. It increases the rate of forward and the reverse reaction by the same amount. Um, activation energy is lowered and equilibrium is reached faster. So that's the key thing there. Equilibrium is reached faster. Your activation energy is lowered and it increases the rate of the forward and the reverse reaction by the same amount. And then your last thing, and I got the equilibrium question here, is Lichitigi. So I often ask you there, you need to know your definitions in this, your calculations and your definitions, and what happens in Lichitigi. So your calculations or your definition, sorry, um, chemical equilibrium, why is it described as dynamic, and what is meant by a reversible reaction in this thing, this should tell you. So when a system at equilibrium is subjected to a stress, the system responds in such a way as to minimize the effect of the stress. That's the one I learn. Whenever one you see in your book or your marking scheme is probably the best to look at. This one, how is the yield of methanol, which is this thing, my alcohol, affected with more carbon monoxide was added so when i add more carbon monoxide i'll write this out roughly we increase the concentration of carbon monoxide now we're applying this should tell you the system responds in such a way as to decrease the concentration of carbon monoxide how are we going to decrease the concentration of this carbon monoxide equilibrium what have i done there whatever am i equilibrium is going to shift here to the right hand side producing more products or in this case my CH3OH so they ask what happens to the yield we've increased the yield so if we increase the yield of carbon monoxide or my reactant the system responds in such a way as to decrease the concentration of my carbon monoxide equilibrium shifts to the right it moves to the right Producing more of my product, which is my methanol, thus increasing the yield of methanol. So that's real rough, but I'm not wasting time writing through it. And the last one, how does the value of Kc? Now, anytime they ask you about the value of Kc, you're always just thinking it's temperature dependent. So, how was the value of Kc affected when more carbon monoxide was added and allowed, or equilibrium was allowed to re-establish? Explain your answer. No effect. Key thing here, Kc only temperature dependent. So if they ask you about the temperature, you're thinking if you increase the temperature, you favour the endothermic, decrease the temperature, favour the exothermic. And you know those from our delta H values. Delta H being plus for an exothermic, delta H or delta H being minus, sorry, minus for an exothermic and being plus for an endothermic as it takes it in.